What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Pony Lawson and today we are trying something a little bit different. Now as most of you know, typically on this channel we are critiquing tattoos sent in by you, the viewer. So I see a ton of tattoo photos. A lot of really bad photos if we're being honest. Not necessarily bad tattoos, but horrible, horrible photos. So I thought, why don't I at least show you guys how I take photos of my tattoos and maybe give you a tip or two on how you guys can take better photos of your own. Because let's be real, you spend so much time making a beautiful tattoo only to take 30 mediocre photos that you're never going to use. Not only that, you're often making your work look way worse than it actually is. Now don't get nervous, you don't have to be a professional photographer. Lord knows I'm not but I will be showing you how I use an actual camera as well as how to achieve similar results with just your phone. So grab your cameras or your phones and let's get started. Once again, thank you guys so much for joining me and if you could please hit that subscribe button as we are putting out new content every week. Before we get started, I would like to mention what kind of equipment I'm using today, and that is the Sony a7 III with a 50mm lens. And this is a slightly older model, but you don't even necessarily need something this nice. In all reality, a 10-year-old used DSLR camera will work just fine, and everything that we talk about today will translate over to that camera as well. Another thing I want to mention I'll be using is this LED panel, but more on that later. If you're picking up a camera for the first time, there are three things that you really need to wrap your head around. The first one being shutter speed, the second one being aperture, and the third one being your ISO. Now obviously our goal here is to produce an image that is exposed properly, sharp and in focus, while introducing as little noise as possible. So let's just jump straight in and get to our first setting. Now right now my shutter speed is set to 1 500th of a second, which means it's going to capture the photo very fast. Having a fast shutter speed is great for freeze framing fast moving subjects. And if we were in better lighting conditions, that might be okay. But since we're in a room where it's rather dim, you can tell that the photo is coming out a bit underexposed. Now when we lower the shutter speed, we're allowing in more light. But if our hands are shaky or our client can't stop moving, then you risk coming out with a blurry photo. So allow me to act as the shaky client. Now again, depending on the lighting situation, this setting can change, but what I find that works best for me is 1 over 125 or faster. Next up is aperture, also referred to as the f-stop. Now aperture can get a bit confusing, so I'll try not to get too far into the weeds. This is an extremely important step, but for me, this is where all the magic happens. First off, the aperture controls the iris of the lens, similar to our eyes, opening and closing, controlling the amount of light entering the camera. Let me show you. As you see here, the lower the f-stop number goes, the brighter the photo becomes. And vice versa, the higher I bring the f-stop number, the darker the photo becomes. So it might feel a little contradictory. Just remember, the lower the f-stop number, the brighter the photo. Now controlling the amount of light is not its only function here. By adjusting our f-stop, we can choose how much of the background is blurred or in focus. Again, as we lower our f-stop number, we're opening our aperture wider and our background becomes a lot more blurry. And as we raise our f-stop number, we're closing the aperture, allowing less light in, and our background becomes more crisp. People tend to open up the aperture as wide as possible, because, hey, why not? Blurred backgrounds look cool. And I agree, but sometimes when it comes to tattoo photos, that does more harm than good. You want all of your tattoo in focus. So for me, I like to keep my f-stop around 3.5 to 5. That way I can still maintain a blurred background while keeping the rest of my tattoo sharp and in focus. I do want to mention that with this lens in particular, I do have the option to change the f-stop on the lens itself. However, most lenses aren't made that way, and you'll have to change that setting on the actual camera body. Now that those pieces of the puzzle are in place, let's talk about ISO, or ISO. Think of ISO much like the knob of a stereo. The more you turn it up, the louder the stereo becomes. The same could be said for the ISO settings on a camera. The higher the ISO, the brighter the image becomes. And vice versa, the lower the ISO, the darker the image becomes. High ISO values can start to add unwanted noise, quickly reducing your image quality. So I just start as low as my camera will go and slowly raise it until I get my desired exposure. Now a lot of modern mirrorless cameras can go very high, but if you're working with an older DSLR, just keep it as low as possible. Now that we've got our basics down, let's go take a picture of an actual tattoo. Sometimes you get a lot of variables thrown at you in a tattoo shop setting like glares, bleeding, and unflattering backgrounds. But there are a couple tools that we can use to help us out with those obstacles. So let's head on over.
Before we go on, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of my channel, Mad Rabbit. Using only clean ingredients, they've got something for everyone. Whether you're a collector or a tattooer, they've got you covered. So make sure you head on over to madrabbit.com and use code PONY20 to get 20% off of your entire order. Head on over there now. All right, let's get back to the show. Now that we're at the shop and we have a fresh tattoo to photograph from our friend Lex, let's first pick our location. Be sure to place your client in a spot where any existing light does not cause any unwanted shadows or color changes. I tend to look for hot spots on the floor from the lights above and then just avoid those. So about right here, you can kind of tell that it's a bit more dim. All right, so go ahead and step up to about right there. That should be good. And turn your leg towards me a bit. Yeah. One note I do want to add before taking any photos is I like to let the tattoo sit a bit, maybe 10-15 minutes just to let any swelling or bleeding subside. You want to make sure to check out the background for any unwanted clutter. Now this is entirely subjective, but I personally like having elements of the shop in the background. I think it not only adds interest to the photo, but helps make the tattoo feel even more real. Now I've got my LED shining on the tattoo just to make sure my light distribution is pretty even. Now as I said before, I like to start with my shutter speed, just because after a long tattoo, clients can become a bit fidgety or move a lot. So I usually set mine to about 1 over 125 just so I capture the photo nice, crisp, and clean without having any blurs. Once my shutter speed is set to where I'd like it at about 125, I'll go ahead and adjust my aperture to about 3.5, just allowing the entire tattoo to become nice and sharp and in focus. And lastly, we'll adjust our ISO just to make sure that our tattoo is exposed properly. An easy way to see if your image is exposed properly is to check out this little exposure bracket down here and you want to get as close to zero as possible. So let's take a picture and see how this looks. Turn your leg a little bit towards me more. No, other way. Yeah, yeah, it's death knife. Now, as you can see, we've got a bit of a glare happening here just because of the ointment and these outside lights. So we've got a few different tools we can use to help correct that. I add this polarizing film over the front of my light in combination with this CPL filter on the front of my lens. I've tried using one without the other in the past, and you can reduce some of the reflections, but I suggest using both of them together. Rotating this filter will increase or decrease the amount of glare you have, so I just kind of rock it back and forth till I get where I'm satisfied. As you can see, in comparison with the first photo we took, this greatly reduces the amount of glare. Now this is my actual setup, the way I've got the light on top of my camera. I use the other rig just to kind of screen record and show you guys what is actually happening on the camera. Yeah, that's a nice photo for sure. Hell yeah. For those of you who don't have an actual camera, we can get similar results with our phone. And I like to keep my phone in regular picture mode, not portrait mode, because sometimes portrait mode can really blur out the sides, making the tattoo look fake. And I've already added the polarizer film to my light, and now I'm going to be using this CPL clip for my phone. And we're just going to do the same thing as we did with the camera, and just rotate that CPL until you get a nice, sharp, and in-focus photo. Right about there. Perfect. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this helped. And if you guys are interested in any of the products we use today, you can click the links below. I also want to thank Lex for helping us out with this one. And if you guys want to go check out his work, it's pretty amazing. You can do so by checking out The Area by Crow on Instagram. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I will see you all next week.